Hello and welcome to IT Security Labs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to exploit a machine called Drifting Blues 6 from Vaughnhub. This is a very easy machine. And if you're interested in learning ethical hacking, this would be a good place to get started. And this machine works very well if you deploy it in VirtualBox. So as you can see, I'm running it in VirtualBox and I'll be attacking it from my Kali Linux here. My IP address is 192.168.38.6 for the machine. So first thing that I do is I run an nmap scan with minus SV minus SC. This is this will scan with SV to find service versions and SC to use default nmap scripts. And I'll put 192.168.38.6 as our IP address. This will scan the top 1000 ports. And if you want to, to scan all ports, you need to use minus P minus flag. But in this case, I'm just scanning the top 1000 ports. And while NMAP is running, you can do other things. But as you can see, it finished here. It shows us that we have robots.txt. In particular, we have this right here and port 80 this version of Apache in this case and we also the, see the title is Drifting Blues so what we can do is we can now go to our browser 192.168.38.6 to see what's running there here is our site so before we start looking at our before we start looking at anything let's look at uh, robots.txt and as you can see, it says disallow this. So we will go and check it out as well. When they say disallow, we would like to check it out. All right, so if you go to the patterns section, it says uh, we need to sign in. So we don't know what the username and password is, but going back to our robots.txt, let's check it out. See, what else does it say? says don't forget to add .zip extension to your dir brute so it, it's giving us an, a hint here that if we're going to be brute forcing using dir buster we need to add a .zip extension so for that let's go ahead and um, run our dir buster then um, and go buster and here's the command that I'm running go buster and I'm going for directories on our browser using medium.txt and here is the .zip option here. Um, we're looking for those. So let's just brute force some directories using Durbuster for those specific directories. All right, looks like we have an error here. What could be the issue? It's not the right IP address. All right, let's run GoBuster again. This time, 192.168.38.6, not 5. And there we go. So I noticed that I have index HTML slash DB. Let's go check slash DB very quickly. Slash DB shows me Charles Brown drifting blues. So that's the reference for the machine. And slash robots, we have already seen robots. All right, so without wasting time, as you can see, we see slash spammer and spammer.zip. That's why they said we needed to add that .zip up here. So let's go and check such spammer it gives us a zip file so we can just click ok to save the file then if we go to our downloads folder we'll notice that we do have um, spammer right here that's our zip file we can try to open it just using the normal and then a spammer. It's a zipped file. Creds.txt, that's what's in there. Let's extract. And extract. It wants a password. So this is a zip file. And it, since it wants a password, uh, we can use a tool called fcrack zip. And this one will actually uh, allow us to crack the password for for us you can install fcrack zip on your machine from 
just uh, using any guide and here is a nice article from hacking articles uh, this blog is really nice it, it will give you a whole article that will show you more things that you can do and the different options that you can use here in this case minus b is for using brute force algorithm minus d for dictionary and this guide will give you uh, all the information that you need and we're using fcrack zip this case for brute forcing um, a password i'm running this command here and i'll explain what we have here fcrack zip minus u so that we can crack some directories and i'm using word lists roku.txt and i'm pointing it to the spammer zipped file and if you just run that this should be fcrack zip if you just run that it will brute force the password for us so f crack zip password is found myspace4 so let's go back here and give it the password myspace4 do you extract let's show the file the user is maya and password is lionheart so let's go back to our site now that we have this um, username and password remember we have a text pattern login here so we use our username mayor and the password lionheart uh, we get this warning here we just ignore it we say only okay let's prevent this page from doing that again i don't know what those ones are and as we get in here we have this page that we can write uh, if you click on this little icon here it changes the theme to be dark and here is a page that we can write you can try to write a php reverse shell in here and save it as an article just like how we attack wordpress and see if you can get reverse shell but if you go to content here you see i see that we can hit we have files just click on that so drop down content files we can browse and upload files here the first thing that i will try to do is to upload php reverse shell from pen test monkey uh, let me use um, nano. I have this one from Pentest Monkey that you can use, and uh, let me show you what that looks like here. here. This is the PHP reverse shell, uh, Pentest Monkey reverse shell. And what we need to do is change this IP address to be our Kali Linux IP address and the port that we want to connect on. That's the one that I copied. I just, uh, as you can see, it's raw from GitHub from this GitHub page here, Pentis Monkey Reverse Shell, and this is the one. All right, and I named it sh.php because I don't want a long name. So once I have it down here, what you need to do is change the IP address. In this case, this IP address should be the Kali Linux IP address. Um, let's do an IPA, 1216830.10, so we are good there. Let's stop the brute forcing and then for the port i can leave it to one two three four or you can put whatever port you want there it doesn't matter so let's save this so that's what we're going to upload right here so let's browse sh.php you see my downloads open upload and we get that error again which is fine but here it is sh.php so now we just need to set up a listener and visit this file here and we should be good to get a reverse shell. So to do that, to get a reverse shell, we set up netcat minus LVNP1234. That's the default. Then we need to execute this. So if you read on the text pattern uh, documentation where it keeps these files here, you can actually see where it keeps them this file is going to be in the this location this is just what you see slash files then slash sh.php that's the one that i want if i execute this it should hang like that then when you go back you notice that we now have a shell let's stabilize this shell by using python be able to just do that we're in sww data let's export the terminal 
make sure that it works properly. Now I should be able to do clear. The thing that I do is I start with ls minus la to see if I have anything interesting. As you can see here, I don't have any. CD search home to see if I have any other users. ls minus la, I don't see any other user on this system, which is very interesting. So let's clear the system. Privilege escalation. Now we need to become root. Let's check for SUIDs first, because that's a good place to get started. So if you check for SUIDs, first thing that stands out to me is the XM4. There are a lot of privilege escalation for XM4 out there, uh, including one of the ones that you can test is this one. This is an XM4 privilege escalation. Um, it should work if we change the path to be the actual path that we have here. Um, but as you will notice this one, if you try it, it doesn't work. But the way it works is I'll just copy this whole thing here, this section here. First, and let's run it. And if you hit enter, we entered the first part. Then um, here, we like the last part, but we need to point it to our XM4 location, then minus PS. That's how it should work. But as you notice here, it doesn't work. Our XM4 is right here. This is what you would do if you see this again, minus PS. This should do privilege escalation, but we don't have um, Perl, Perl running here. As you can see, this is the error that we get. So we know this might not work. Maybe I'm not doing it right, but I did spend some time trying to make XM4 work. Just know that if you see XM4 um, right here, you need to do that. So next, we can do a uname minus A. Let's check the kernel version, which I don't like kernel exploits, but um, after looking around, that looked like that was the only option. So let's copy that version and plug it into Google and see if we have any anything interesting. And as you can see right away, we do have dirty cow, which is um, the easiest privilege escalation that we can ever get. So let's go ahead and just um, download this to save it as uh, 40839, okay. So if we go to our downloads, if I do an LS, you know, you notice that I have the 40839.c, cat 40839.c, that's our exploit. All we need to do is let's move this exploit to our victim machine and execute it, because that's how we can uh, just do that exploit quickly. My file transfer, I prefer to use Python simple HTTP. That's the easiest one to use. So let's just do that. One port 8080, going back to our victim machine here. Uh, where is it? I like to write in such TMP. Uh, I have nothing so far. wget HTTP dot 38 dot 10 on 8080 and c so we are just downloading it here and here's our exploit so now let's just use simple gcc to comp compile it if you want to check if gcc is installed you can do it which gcc and you notice that it's installed so now we just need to um compile it using uh, GCC and the syntax is very simple here. GCC minus P thread and I would like to compile 40839.c and as output to, let's just name it shell. This will be our exploit and you want it to be minus L crypt compile this exploit and as you can see if I do an ls and now I have shell 
So if this works properly for this system, I should be able to just run the shell and it should become, um, should give us, this exploit should create another use on the system. That's how data call works. So let's create a password for password and it will edit the Etsy file. That's just how the exploit works. And this time, as you can see, it created a user named Firefart and the user has root privileges pretty much. So if I hit enter again, it hangs here. So what I can do is I can just kill that, start my listener again, go back to the browser, start over the reverse shell. And once we get back in, we can switch user to our user Firefart. And things should be good. Okay, so now we are back again. Let's stabilize the shell. Otherwise, we won't be able to switch user properly here without a stable shell. Now, quickly. All right, so we're in here. Now we can switch user to. That's the user that was created by our exploit. That's what the exploit does. It creates another user. And we created a password for this user named password. So if we do that and enter password, which is the password that we created, now we're in as this user. This user does have root privileges. So if you say ID, you notice that sure enough, we do have root privileges. We can see this to the root directly. And here's our flag. So get flag text. And there we go. So this was a kernel exploit and we were able to get in. So that's it from, for me today. Otherwise, thank you very much for being here. If you haven't, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you later.